Channel Sports Central will be going over our next final prediction of this offseason, and it's going to be over the Oregon State Beavers. And this is a team, of course, that was 5-7 in 2019. They barely almost made it to a bowl game. Of course, they were one game away in the 2019 season. But whether or not this team will make it to a bowl game in 2020 and why I think this Oregon State team could be a potential dark horse next season is what we're going over here today. We're also going to be going over your returning production along with a full prediction and preview on every game on Oregon State's schedule heading into the 2020 season. With that, let's look at your season trends from last season. Once again, they were three and four between September and October, and then two and three between November and the postseason. So, yeah, this is a team that's pretty consistent, but not really in a good way. I mean, this team had a couple of really good wins down the stretch. As you can see, they did beat off California when California was in their prime, 21 to 17. Uh, they also beat off Arizona State, 35 to 34. But still, I mean, Oregon State, I mean, this was a team that had a couple of really good wins. But at the same time, had a couple of really bad losses, which really was very detrimental to their chances in the end of making it to a bowl game, which in general, I would say Oregon State last season, they had enough good wins, especially against Cali and Arizona State, for me to say that Oregon State could have easily been a bowl team last season. I mean, they had the potential to be a bowl team in 2019. They just were not able to get up to that six win threshold in the end. But still for Oregon State, they were five and seven overall. Really not all that terrible in comparison to how many expected them to be in the 2019 season. I mean, I heard many experts saying Oregon State would only get two to three wins uh, for the 2020 season. And in the end, they definitely um, went further than those expectations. But yeah, definitely. I mean, they still had a good win against Arizona too. Can't forget about that. They beat them off 56 to 38. And so, I mean, that was a big road game too. Can't forget about that. how that game was on the road. And once again, they did be off California, which that was a team that in general at that point in the season was a really good team, especially in their division, 21-17. to 17. And once again, I mean, Arizona State was another team that was ranked for a good majority of the season, and they got a big win there at 35-34 to 34 as well. As far as the returning production looks, though, of course you lose your starting quarterback in Jake Luton, and it looks like Tristan Gebbia will be your quarterback for next season. Of course, he transferred in from Nebraska, and he's going to be your quarterback for next season, it looks like right now. They do lose their top running back in Art Pierce, though. That's probably going to be a very tough loss for Oregon State next season. I mean, he, he managed to put up some good yardage. Of course, he wasn't, I would say, one of the best running backs in the Pac-12, uh, but he still put up a pretty good season, so that's going to be a tough loss there. They do return their second running back in Jamar Jefferson. It looks like he will be your uh, your starting running back for next season, so watch out for him. Uh, but as far as this receiving court goes, he took a couple of really tough losses uh, with Isaiah Hodgins and Noah. Uh, and of course, I mean, looking at this receiving court, at least you do return your second receiver and Champ Flemings, but in the end, uh, this receiving core is still um, taking a couple of really tough losses, and that's gonna be really tough for whichever quarterback that takes over, in which this case, it looks like it's going to be Tristan Gebbia, which, I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of experience. We really have not seen him perform a whole lot, so it'll be interesting to see how he does. I mean, it's gonna be all up in the air as to how good Tristan Gibby will be next season, but still, I mean, you are losing a couple receivers that are definitely going to be, or definitely would have been big banks on this team in the 2020 season. As far as the offensive line looks, you lose one on there. You also lose two defensive linemen and one linebacker along with one in the secondary. So you lose four starters on the defense, which really is right around average. Most teams lose three to four on the defense a year. So for Oregon State losing four, it's really not all that much out of the ordinary. Brings, brings up the question, chances of a bowl season for Oregon State next year, of course, once again. I mean, this receiving or this returning production is not looking all that great for Oregon State. I would not say it's one of the better ones in the Pac-12. Uh, but definitely, I think, I mean, they still have got a lot of talent here. I mean, you can't forget about Champ Flemings and Jamar Jefferson, both of those players. Definitely expect them to put up big seasons. And but the thing is, though, chances of a bowl season, I think Oregon State could easily get up to that point, uh, considering they were able to get a couple of big wins last season with the amount of talent they had. I mean, you can't forget, Oregon State really did not have a lot of talent, if any, uh, going into the 2019 season. That's why they were not expected to be very good at all. I mean, once again, many experts only expected them to get two to three wins last season. So, you know, Oregon State easily was one of the worst teams in the Pac-12, it looks like, for, for a point in the 2019 season. But still, they managed to put up five wins. You can't forget about that. So, brings up the question as well, is Oregon State a dark horse contender? I mean, who knows? I mean, they were definitely a dark horse last season. I mean, no one expected them to be as good as they were or they at all. And he, even though they went five and seven, I would still consider Oregon State to be a dark horse going into the 2019 season. And for 2020, though, I think Oregon State could easily be a team that makes it to a bowl game. I mean, once again, they've got the talent here, uh, but it's just a matter of 
whether or not they can get their wins. I mean, it's just, I mean, their schedule is pretty tough as well. You can't forget about that, and that's what we're looking at next. Of course, you do get rid of Oklahoma State. Your game against Oklahoma State in Stillwater, that was scheduled to be your first game of the season on the road. So you will not have to play against them anymore. Of course, they were um, a part of the non-conference games that were canceled for the Pac-12 conference. So instead, you do have to play Washington State for your first game of the season in the last week of September. And then you got Arizona State and Washington, two really tough games on the road. Um, so obviously, I mean, you're starting off your season with four really tough games. I mean, you can't forget about California as well. I think California could easily win that Pac-12 South Division next season. I mean, looking at Stanford too, I mean, Stanford being on the road, I think that's a very winnable game, probably their, their most winnable road game, I would say. But in the end, you got to play UCLA, Utah, Arizona, and Oregon then in your November. So this is a tough schedule for Oregon State next season. I would say it's probably one of your tougher non-conference uh, or tougher com conference schedules of all the Pac-12. I mean, you start off the season with Washington State, which I do expect you to get a win. I do expect you to beat Washington State and start off the season 1-0. I really, I mean, Mike Leach leaving Washington State and that team in general is losing a ton of talent going into 2020. So I think Washington State should be an easy opponent. And Oregon State does get a win there. However, I think you take two losses against Arizona State and Washington. I mean, I considered possibly giving them a win against Washington. But in the end, I think coming off of a tough game against Arizona State, it just kind of starts off a slew of pretty tough games for Oregon State. So... You do take a loss in Arizona against Arizona State, and then you also take a loss in Seattle against Washington. So you start off your season one and two through your first three games. But I mean, the thing is, though, for Oregon State is that it really is very detrimental to their chances of making a bowl game. Um, I mean, even if, uh, or I'm not even sure how the bowl protocol is going to go for this season. Of course, now with the non-conference games being canceled, I'm not quite sure as to whether or not they're going to keep that six-win rule. But I mean, as far as like your non-conference games go, I mean, Port yeah, Portland State and Colorado State, I would consider to be two wins for Oregon State. I'm not quite sure about the Oklahoma State game. I mean, that one would be a really tough game, I would say, for this Oregon State team. But still, I mean, looking at the rest of your October, you got California and Stanford, which I do expect you to take a loss against California. I think California next season is looking very good with Chase Garbers at quarterback. And if he's able to stay healthy, I mean, that California team could easily be one of the best in the Pac-12. And they could be a national contender, too. Who even knows? I mean, some experts are expecting them to possibly have 10 to 11 wins next season, kind of like myself. I think they're definitely a team to watch out for. And Stanford as well. That's going to be a tough win. I do expect you to get it done, but it will be a tough one in the end. I also expect you to get a win against UCLA on November 7th. That's going to be an easier one. Uh, so you do go into your November with a 3-3 three and three record, which really is not all that bad considering how tough of a schedule this is for Oregon State, in which for your November, for the rest of your November at least, I do expect you to go one and two. I think you do take a loss at Utah. I think you'll be close. I think Oregon State could easily pull off a big upset there against that Utah team, but I think that Utah ends up getting the win in the end. However, I do expect you to take a win against Arizona, and then I think you take a loss against Oregon to finish off the regular season. So, I mean, Oregon, that's another team that definitely was one to watch out for. I mean, Oregon, even though they're losing their quarterback, in Justin Herbert, who's expected to have a big career in the NFL. I mean, yeah, still with Tyler Shadows at quarterback, that Oregon team is definitely looking like, I would say, the favorite to win that Pac-12 North next season. Uh, so, yeah, Oregon, watch out for that game as well, but I think Oregon gets the win in the end. So your record prediction for your regular season will be 4-5. and five. And once again, it goes back to those non-conference games. If they do still include that 6-win threshold, that's going to be very detrimental to this Oregon State team. I mean, if they still kept their three non-conference games going uh, with Colorado State and Portland State, I would expect both of those games to be wins. So Oregon State, in a normal season, would probably make a bowl game, I would say. I mean, this is a team that could go 6-6 six and six if they still the non-conference games going. But in the end, it's going to be a 4-5 and five record prediction for Oregon State next season. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, though, on this team. If you enjoyed this preview, be sure to drop a like on it and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel, and I'd really appreciate that. But as always, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this Beaver team, and I will see you all later.